Hey guys, and welcome back to Arkham Asylum. I'm Rich. And I'm Billy. And to prevent what happened last time, we actually have come up with a topic to discuss. Yeah, it's not going to get into really weird topic like uh, butt plugs and shits. Yeah. Uh, about, so, we're, we're about just clarifying. <laughs> right, so we're talking about the state of video gaming. Yes, we could talk about Batman, but everyone knows everything there is to know about Batman at this point, so... So, Batman. we're going to talk about the state of video games. Um... As such, ah, good luck with President of Keith. Oh, nice of him. Yeah. As such, it's a case of um, today, video games are very samey because developers will follow a set system, one that they know will work, because they're scared of losing money. It's a very risky move to try something new at this point. And based on the way it's marketed towards us. You know, we get very similar and non-unique gameplay. Very samey, like Call of Duty. There's like 23 Call of Duties now. Um, I thought that was just last year alone. Funny. Uh, very superficial changes. Uh, Ubisoft are taking, rumoured to be taking the next year out of releasing the Assassin's Creed series. So they can put all their resources into developing the next Assassin's Creed. So they can really get the story moving, they can really make some new changes rather than superficial changes. Um, oh, there you go, different character, slight plot, plot development. Yeah, so, uh, they're, well, yeah, that's the problem, it's like, they're scared of making changes, but the indie come, the indie scene, they have to try something new. Yeah, otherwise they want some. Really. Yeah, although, you know, it has to be a unique concept, like Adventure Capitalist. That's not a game out there, but it's based on Cookie Clicker. A very successful time waster. Uh -huh. um, and uh, To the Moon, that's a classic example oh, of that, that indie game. Oh yeah, that's a very story driven. There's very little in the way of gameplay, but it's a, a game that sells. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's actually announced, after five years, he's uh, announced that in, within this year, he will release Finding Paradise. Yeah. Um, just got the email the other day. Nice. Super excited! Um, but like you said, a lot of big eight uh, triple rated games have just they've lost story. They've become focused on the graphics and gameplay. Like yeah, and now this isn't to say that all of them have. It's just no. a majority of statement. Yeah, so take take the like like Batman, Batman, Batman. Arkham Knight. Yeah. I mean, while it's a good game, I'm not I'm not faulting that. It was too predictable because they kind of couldn't put them in focus on story as much as they should have done. Well, they, that was the problem. Actually, I think that was the problem. They focused a lot on the story because within the Batman lore, there was no Arkham Knight, so they created a character. The story was very good, you know, and there was enough surprise, yeah, they, but they, they removed all of the um, suspense because they based the characters on previously known characters so you could predict what's going to happen. Yeah, and then like any uh, Batman lore that you like tried to follow was completely changed for the Arkham games, pretty much. Yeah, they invented their own continuity, which is fair enough. As long as it stays within its own continuity, then it makes sense. Yeah, but then how hard they tried to uh, Asylum and the City for the uh, stuff to be in continuity, they kind of just ruined for Arkham Knight. Yeah, you also got to consider Origins in that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but to be fair, it's still a game and did try new things with like Bat Day. Yeah. Um, Overused. Well, yeah, but it tried. It tried. It did try, but... Give him the credit. Yeah. Um, but, yes, there's a lot of games out there that's fantastic based on old games when it was the era of innovation, when developers weren't scared to try something new. Like, one of uh, the best games, I think, to come out last year in the indie scene was Ori in the Blind Forest. Which was a that, that oh, that was a cackle. Yep. Um, which was a Metroidvania game. Uh, so you know, based on the old classics of Metroid and <laughs> Castlevania, or because that was like the level up one. Yeah. Um, so it was based on those old classics. Oh, hey guys. Um, but we don't see those anymore because it's a new era. It's like. You know, it's not as predictable that they'll sell well, even though everyone wants one. Um, so with the AAA scene, it's like, gotta make sure that everyone's getting what they've already got. You know, it's like, 
Can't innovate too much, needs to be superficial. I'm gonna get killed. Uh, I believe in you. <laughs> if I survive, I'll be impressed. You just, you just gotta back the leap. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's like, it's very limited thinking because they've got to work on what will sell because publishing is very expensive, making a game is very expensive. It's actually become. I think it's becoming yeah. as expensive to make as a movie. No, uh, some games are more expensive, like uh, GTA, that was more than, more than a movie. Yeah, it depends on the movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's becoming as big a business as big Hollywood blockbusters. Oh. Yeah, I got yeah. swatted. Um, it needed, it needed is. But you know, it's like they're spending. I don't know why it's costing them more and more money each time, because they're just using the same template. There's no innovation going on beyond superficial. Uh, I, I would say they focus on graphics, but and, no matter what the game is, people can play about graphics. Yeah, you're playing on PC. It's frame rate and the options and resync and. This, that, and the other. Let me take Fallout for an example. They went for a little bit more of a cartoony look. Rage about the graphics. Oh yeah. I like the graphics, and yet, you know, there are mods out there that release pretty much day one for the realism. Yeah. It's yeah. a shithole. <laughs> realism isn't going to add much to that. No, realism is basically going to turn it black. No, to be fair, the uh, mods that are out now, they do look good, but they're not needed. No. But I think any like superficial mods like that aren't needed, because the game was designed like that in mind, so how it's gonna work. There are lots of mods out there that are like ridiculous. Like some of Skyrim's mods. Those are pretty fucked up. Well, imagine. Um you know, it's, uh, there's nothing new about gaming in the AAA scene, and that's causing damage. You know? So, when was the last time you played a game that was like super unique? And then it's like. Because. I was watching this thing the other day. Um, uh, I think it was the Game Overthinker. Uh, Screw Attack. Very good. Done by a guy named Bob. He knows what he's talking about. Uh, it was all about how we should remember the past of video games, and we should always like look into the past games because developers are starting to try and pass off old sort of gameplay as new. You know, it's like you never seen this before, and it's like, yeah, we have. It's like um, he made a point about uh, ethnicity. It's like. You know, ethnicity is a big issue in video gaming, it's like we're not getting a lot of like minority characters. And you know, we didn't have that problem in like the eighties and nineties. You know? There were black characters and Asian characters all over the place. You know? In fact you know, straight off, you know, for women straight off we had Metroid. You know? Completely out of nowhere. Boom. Samus, woman. That was and that really threw everyone off. That made everyone think. Yeah. Yeah, we got some great games out of that. We got Lara Croft. Yeah, that was like the biggest one. Um, in fact, the new Lara Croft Tomb Raider. Um, yeah, I am, girl. <laughs> yeah, I can say about that. Well, yeah, but that one was actually written by a woman. Yeah. It was like, but it still kept the same feel. If I remember correctly, it was written by Terry Pratchett's daughter. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Um, I can't remember her name, but it was written by her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Terry Pratchett Jr. <laughs> Terry's a girl's name, so why not? Oh. Right in the back of the spike. I'm gonna be doing this fight for a while. Yeah. Um pretty much all episode probably. Did I set this to hard mode? I don't know. I don't know what mode I set this on. Does it matter? No, I'm just it'll We're explain. professionals, damn it. It'll explain you can things. Do a super hard mode if you want to do. It, no, it'll just explain things as well. Right. I know it's not easy, I don't think. Because I wouldn't have died so many times. Um I actually don't remember what I said this on months no. ago now. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Uh, I forgot what we were talking about. We were going to Terry Pratchett's daughter. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's like. But, you know, it's, there was also that big issue of, you know, women in the industry. 
Yeah, and then uh, what's the test called? You uh, tested the uh, one that is barely just a... Oh, uh, the Bechtel test. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, basically, it follows three questions, I think. Uh, is there more than one woman in the game? Does she and this other woman have a conversation that's not about a man? Um, and does she have substance or something like that? Uh, like that, yeah. Most uh, games actually fail yeah. because they're either limited or they don't have. Technically, um, oh yeah, one of the rules is do the women talk to each other. Yeah. Um, so, right now, Batman's failed. No, actually, Batman's passed. Has it? Yeah, yeah. By all technicalities, it's passed uh, because it's got Oracle, Harley Quinn, and Ivy in it. Yeah, but they just... Ivy and Harley Quinn have had a conversation about letting Ivy out. Did not talk about a man. Right. So, in all technicalities, but this is past. Cat, Catwoman and Oracle failed. Well, yes. Um, but yeah, by all technicalities in this game, this passed. And I think most of the Arkham games actually do pass. Um, I think uh, I don't think Night passes, actually. Um, it's DLC, would it? It's DLC, yeah, that would. Actually, no, because she only talks to Robin about Robin. Uh, she wouldn't pass that either. No. I know this one definitely passes, and I think City passes. Um, yeah, City would pass because she plays uh, Catwoman, according to uh, Ivy. Yeah, uh, about trying to get into the vault. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that one does pass. But it's like, but that's the point. It's like this game is, you know, passes the Bechtel test. The Bechtel test isn't a good marketing about whether or not it's fair to women. No. You know, even though people are like saying it is. Um, that's also the issue, it's like, you know, they're all marketed towards women and stuff like that. Yeah, you shouldn't market the game towards women or boys or yeah. men. You yeah, that actually... The game to yeah. people. You know, that came out of, like, you know, early marketing for, like, when it consoles went from being electronics to toys. Yeah. Uh, in the... For whatever reason, you suddenly start to become marketed towards uh, men or women for whatever reason. Oh, that was because, uh, at that time, Toys were either male or female, boy yeah. or girl, blue or pink. Yeah, and then consoles, and that was no, that was that was from the consoles. Seriously, watch Adam ruin some of them. You get, you get it. Um, but yeah, further on than that, it's like women in industry. It's like you know, people are saying, oh, girls can't do that well in industry, that sort of thing. I can think of a number of developers that have kicked ass, and they're women. Uh, the Sierra. You know the Sierra company? Uh-huh. Started by a woman. Well, started by a woman and a man. A uh, husband, I think. Uh, but they made King's Quest. Uh-huh. And they made some really kick-ass games. Uh-huh. The woman was in charge of that one. You know, um... There's been a number of games. I think Ori and the Blind Forest had a... Would have had a number of women on staff. Um, but yeah, it's like, people are saying, you know, it might make it easier, it might make it, you know, handy, it might be less fun. No, it just adds diversity, we get a new experience. You know? I mean, to be fair, oh, our ideas of games for women, you know, like, made by men, are shit. Oh, like, I can't even name one. Oh, there's, there's tons. Barbie games. That was so amazing, don't diss them. So, <laughs> There, I kicked ass. Game over. Um, but yeah, the Barbie games, they were made by blokes for girls. Yeah. It was like, this is what girls want. This is totally what girls want. Super pink. Um, the Bratz games. Um, you know, and that's not true. It's like, my sister likes this game. Yeah. You know, she plays it on her Xbox, which ain't pink. Because I think Microsoft released a pink Xbox for girls. Probably. I know there's pink Wii. Yeah, uh, yeah, but to be fair, that's a mini, and uh, it comes in all colors. Sure. <laughs> it comes in black, white, blue, red, so... Green, keep... orange, yeah. so maroon... Get... <laughs> so, be fair, it just comes in all colors. Yeah. Um, so does the DS, that comes in three... It originally came in one color, then two, then five, Yeah. and now we're back down to two, but now we have adjustable cases. Yeah. So. In all fairness, that 
they're being inclusive by just letting you choose your favorite color. So it's not like being, you know, poor yeah. women, poor girls or anything like that. Yeah, here's a blue one and here's a pink one. Yeah. Um, it's not a problem, as a point would put it. It's just we're not getting, it's not fair and the game industry is suffering. Oh, life isn't fair. <laughs> well, I can quite seriously now. Yeah, oh, oh, there light, we go. No, light, no, 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 no. That light is the indicator of lag here. Yeah. Oh, we're back, we're back. No, we're not back. No. Oh. Oh. Come oh. on, game. You know, I believe in you. You know, game. 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 It's not happening. Oh, oh. no. 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 I think it was trying to render a lot of particle effects from that crash. Probably. There we go. We're good now. <laughs> Moving around a bit. No, no, no. No, no we're not good. I'm not good. Give a sec. Wait for the breathing. Come on. Come on, you can do this game. Smooth it out, smooth it out. Yeah. Wow, this is... This, this is serious, like... Yeah, yeah, oh, wait, no. We, we good now? Yeah, I think we're, got, I think we're back. Alright, alright, awesome. We're, right, back. Right, awesome. we're right. back for it. Um, Twin got a rhyme. Now I get the triple. Awesome. Um, but yeah, so the game industry suffers because it's not an inclusive game. Um... You know, I happen to know loads of like, you know, girly games that I happen to really enjoy. Like Kirby games. Maybe that guy They're prefer. technically considered girly games. True. Um. Let's see. What have, what what have I got on the shelf here? Um. I'm walking into a wall. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, 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 let me take a look. Uh, yeah. See. What have I got on the shelf? Um. Now. Um, a boy in his blob. That's more emotional based. Mm. We saved so, and we're at seventeen minutes. Oh. So only episode in a minute. Um, but yeah, it's like a lot of girly games. Doesn't make sense because you know. No. And to each their own. People can enjoy whatever the hell they want to enjoy. Nah, hell yeah. Because you know, even though the Lego games that marketed to kids, they're like our favorite game series. Yeah, like Pokemon is marketed to kids. Oh, hell, everybody knows that college students are bashing on the Pokemon. That's because we're the same age. Yeah. You know, it's like... We grew up with Pokemon. And I yeah. Got... I, I think that was the point. People say that, you know, Ash should have grown up yeah. you know, with us, or they should release a new one where Ash is 21 years old. Yeah. So it, like, relates. Uh-huh. You know? But they don't, so... No. It's, it's kind of weird. It is very weird. Um, well, was weird. Everyone around him ages, and Ash is like, nope. Yeah. You know, it's like, there's no specific thing of, this is for boys, this is for girls. No, there's no way to make a good game. It'll always be flawed somehow. Well, flaws are subjective. Yeah, exactly. So while I think one aspect is good, you might think it's not. Can you think of a game example? We've been such, we've had a disparate connection better? No, no, I can't. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like, it's... There's no point to any serious discussion on that one. It's like games are the, awesome, except the fact it's also the concept of casual and hardcore. Yeah. It's like you consider a hardcore that plays a lot. I'm hardcore. Depending on the games, you know, I might be more casual based because I play a lot of casual games. Yeah. Like Adventure Capitalist. That's a, cap that's a casual no, game. No, I I think hardcore gamers complete uh, goes towards people who complete Dark Souls. Oh, fuck it. If Those... they complete Dark Souls... They're not hardcore. They're badass. Yeah. Um, no, it's a... Bro, you hardcore. But yeah. It's like, you know, Professor Layton. That's like meant to be a casual game. But the story is so good. Yeah. Like, pretty much any Nintendo game is meant to be a casual game. But yeah. they're, they're great games. Yeah, it's like, at the end of, like, Professor Layton 3, tears. Yeah. For, like, an hour. You know, because it's like, you know, the end cut, the ending is like, for the length just of the right heart. in the feels. You know, and you're just being punched repeatedly in the heart. Yeah. You know, and that sucks. You know, it's at times like these where I realise we should talk to have a podcast. We should talk to the Yeah, that, that's something we can do in the future. Yeah. In the meantime, I'll just, I'll just be like, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.